Okay. Uh, at the end of last week's lecture, I left you with um, a quiz about deflections. And I said, what if we uh, reduce the length of the uh, red beam that we were uh, analysing? So originally it was 500 millimetres long. What if we made it 100 millimetres long uh, and we calculated the deflection? And I asked you, um, would the deflection be equal to PL cubed upon 3EI, which is the equation for cantilever bending because what we saw with the 500 millimeter long beam uh, was that uh, the results were for the deflection at the end of the beam here at point A uh, was almost exactly uh, the same as PL cubed upon 3EI um, you know, about 0.1 or 2 percent different so um, what do you think is it going to be PL cubed upon 3EI is it going to be that deflection plus about 10 percent or that deflection minus about 10%. Okay, uh, so let's go and have a look at uh, SolidWorks and see what that tells us. Um, but for, uh, before we do that, um, pause the video uh, and do the calculations for yourself for a 100 millimeter long um, beam uh, using the dimensions that we had in class. So I think it was 18 millimeters across, 38 millimeters high, and a Young's modulus of 210 gigapascals. Okay, so if you did that calculation, um, you should get a, a deflection at the end of about 1.928 by 10 to the minus 2 millimetres. So let's see what SolidWorks tells us in our simulation. Okay, so again you can see we've got the alloy steel and our length of our beam is 100. So let's have a look at that vertical displacement and we see that we have a di vertical displacement of 2.19 by 10 to the minus 2 which if you do the calculations works out at about 9% greater than um, 1.928 that we got from PL cubed upon 3EI. Alright so what's going on here? Um, why is there this discrepancy? All right, let's have a look at what we've got in terms of our mesh Okay, so uh, to turn that on, um, that display on, we go to settings and we want to show the mesh. Okay, so we've got a fairly fine um, mesh. Um, let's create a, an even finer mesh for that and see if that changes our results. So let's change the mesh, create mesh. Okay, yep, yeah, we can get rid of that. Our mesh parameters, so let's change it to 1.5 and create the mesh. Uh, that doesn't look like it changed very much. Okay, that's because it didn't for some reason. So let's try that again, 1.5, enter and apply that. Okay, so this is taking a bit longer, so it's going to be a lot finer. Alright, so let's run that and see what happens. Okay, so um, having run that analysis uh, with the much finer mesh, as we can see, we've got a displacement of 2.2. Okay, so we're still around about 9% um, greater deflection. Okay, so we can see that it's not the mesh that's um, doing it. Uh, in fact, we could uh, go back and change that mesh to something really coarse and see what we get. So let's go back to 6. Right. Apply that and run that and see what we get. And our vertical displacement is 2.18. Okay, so um, that's not what the problem is. Alright, so thinking about this now, we've got uh, a value of around 2.2 from um, simulation. So going back to our uh, diagram here. So we've got 2.2 by 10 to the minus 2 for simulation and 1.93 um, from theory. So which one is correct? Well, as it turns out, in this case, the simulation is the one that's correct. Um, our theory is inadequate because what we don't or haven't included 
uh, in our theoretical calculation is the deflection due to shear. So if you go back to um, your MAC solids and also strength of engineering materials, um, when we did beam deflection calculations, uh, and particularly in energy methods, we assumed that the deflection due to shear was negligible, uh, which is true for a long beam, uh, which was the case for the 500 millimetre long beam. But now that we've made it short, 100 millimetres, we're you know, just about um, well, less than three times, um, or the, the, the depth of the beam is you know, a bit over a third of the length of the beam. Okay, so now shear deflection is um, starting to become non-negligible. Non okay, so uh, in this case our theory was inadequate if we don't include the shear deflection. So the correct answer to our uh, multiple choice quiz over here was uh, B. The deflection will be P or cubed upon 3EI plus about 10% for the shear. Okay, so the next thing um, I had in uh, the multiple choice quiz was if we have a beam, quite a long beam in bending, um, and we have a vertical deflection um, which is equal to 30% of its length, what will be the horizontal predicted deflection B? Okay, so let's modify our uh, beam. Let's take it back to 500, apply a load, um, and have a look at what the horizontal deflection uh, is predicted by the FEA analysis, or the FE analysis. Okay, so I've gone and uh, changed the length back to 500, and I've also changed the material to rubber just so we get a bit more deflection. And I've applied a force of 1.8 newtons, and we can see that our vertical displacement now is 150 millimeters. Um, so I can go in and um, show a deformed plot of that. If I go into deform shape and plot that, All right, so we can see we've got that large deflection. Uh, don't worry about this thing. It, doesn't work properly sometimes. Um, so we've now got a vertical displacement of the beam at about 30% of the length of the beam. All right, so what do we expect the horizontal deflection to be? Zero, 30% of the vertical deflection, 3% of the vertical deflection, 10% of the vertical deflection. Stop the video and um, have a think about what you think that will be. All right, so if we go and look at the horizontal deflection, um, that's in the wrong spot. So let's use our plot tool to find the right spot. So on selected entities, let's grab our point here. Update that. And we see we've got essentially zero. And you can see that from the colors as well. So our horizontal deflection Right. predicted by the uh, finite element analysis is zero plus or minus some round off error. Okay, so let's go back to our um, vertical displacement here again and let's look at it from a front on view. Let's move that thing out of the way for now. Uh, just ignore that again because the points moving around because we're showing a, de a um, deformed shape. But if we pan this across just to the edge of the screen here, right, what we can see is that this point here lines up with where the end of the beam was originally. So in a linear static analysis, you're not going to see that um, movement or that the deformation or deflection back this way that you would actually get in um, in reality. Okay, so um, in this case, both the theory and the simulation uh, aren't quite um, accurately representing what happens in reality. In order to get that horizontal displacement here, you would need to do um, a nonlinear analysis. Uh, in the, the textbook, Kurofsky, uh, that you can get from the library, 
uh, that also gives some examples of uh, this sort of um, phenomenon. Uh, and I think they give an example of a, a bar in torsion uh, and a similar sort of thing occurring. Right? And of course, it's not just the, the simulation uh, FEA that predicts this, your uh, PL cubed upon 3EI that we looked at before, uh, and your standard um, beam deflection uh, doesn't take into account that movement back in this way for large displacements either. Um, okay, so uh, the only way you can get that is, uh, is if, as I said, if you do a nonlinear analysis. All right, so that's probably enough for this little video, um, and I'll um, see you again in another video. All right, so I hope this was interesting and um, helpful. All right, see you next time.